On today's episode, I'm continuing to look at Nick Color Effects, part of the Nick Collection. Today, I'm looking at one of my favorites, the Film Effects Modern Branded Filter. It's a really great one. You don't want to miss this one. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you so much for joining me again today. On this episode, I'm working with Nick Color Effects Pro, and today I'm working with one of my all-time favorite filters in there, and this is one that a lot of people miss, and that is the Film Effects Modern Branded Filter. Now, what the heck does that all mean? Well, you're going to find out here very shortly. But before I start, I just want you to know there's a Black Friday sale going on for DxO. You save up to 50% off. And you can see here the pricing here, like Photo Lab is normally $219 on sale for $149. The Nick Collection is normally $149. You could get it right now for $75. So here's all the different sales. Now, this sale is going on from now up to Monday, November 28th. It ends at 11.59 p.m. local time. If you're interested in the Nick Collection or any of the DxO software, just click on my affiliate link in the description below. It'll take you to the sales. When you use my affiliate link, I make a small commission, and that helps me to keep tutorials coming your way. And when you do that, I thank you. Before we dive into the Film Effects Modern Filter, let's take a look and see what Nick has to say about it. The modern filter from the film effects series is used to simulate the appearance of color films, negatives, and slides, including grain. Using the advanced sliders in the film details section, you can even define your own film types to create never-before-seen imaginary films. This is really cool. We're now living in the digital age, but you know what? Back in the film days, there were some really cool films available, and there are still films that you can purchase today, and a lot of people still use film. And I love this filter because we can emulate or simulate all kinds of different films. And to me, that's exciting. And after today's tutorial, hopefully you'll be excited about this filter as well. This is one that a lot of people overlook, but I think it's one you need to really consider using. Let's take a look at the first category, film type. Select one of the available films. For each type, multiple films were printed, scanned, and analyzed to create the most authentic film emulation possible. And that's exciting. They worked really hard to get these looks to look just like the film to match them and that is really cool because some of those older films had certain characteristics to them you know the way they handled color and tone and things of that nature and now with this software we're able to emulate those exact films and for that very reason i'm a big fan of this filter we also have a brightness adjustment you know basically controls the overall brightness of the image of course we have contrast we can control the contrast of the photo, but then we have sensitivity. You're going to see how these sliders and things work. Sensitivity, each slider can be used to control the brightness of a specific color in the photo. And then we have saturation. Each slider can be used to adjust the intensity of a specific color in the photo. And then we have a tone curve. Now, this tone curve is really important for this film effects filter. This tool lets you adjust the contrast of the film type and change the tone and contrast of red, green, and blue separately. And I'm going to get into that tone curve, and you're going to see how DxO have really worked with the tone curve and all the different colors to really match the specific films that they are emulating. And nobody does this kind of stuff like DxO. They are the experts. And then we have grain, and I know a lot of us in this digital age are not into grain. I am. I like certain grain. I think it really adds a very photorealistic effect to images. These sliders let you add realistic grain to your photo using Nick Software's unique grain engine. And I'll show you how all this works. It's really cool. Now, each one of these films will give you just the right amount of grain for the particular film that it is emulating. And then, of course, we always have our shadow and highlight protection sliders, which I explain in every one of these filter tutorials. And now, armed with this information, let's take a look at the Film Effects Modern Branded Filter. 
I'm starting out here in Photoshop. I have the Nick Selective tool opened up. By the way, to open the Nick Selective tool up, you come up here to File, go to Automate, and you'll find it right here. Just click on that, okay? So here it is. And I have that saved out as one of my favorites. Anytime you save out a filter as a favorite, it'll show up in this list of filters under Color Effects Pro 5. And here it is right here, Film Effects Modern. That's the modern branded filter. But I want to say something before I launch the filter. This image started out as a raw file with very minimal adjustments on it, okay? And I highly recommend that you go into this filter with very minimal adjustments because I find if you do, you're going to get the best results when you use this filter because remember it's emulating films and you want your image to take on the characteristic of that film so you don't want to over process it before you go into this filter that's very important and don't forget that now let's go ahead and launch this filter i'm just going to click on film effects modern and we'll fire up color effects pro and we'll go ahead and dive into this filter by the way in case you don't know there's 55 different filters inside of color effects pro 5 there's a lot to work with here and this has been a standard for photo editors for many years now and we can see right here here is see the little yellow bar right here that's showing me that that's the filter i'm working with and if i click this little uh arrow it's a drop down and you could see different presets that they give us to start out with and you could choose and go through some of these different presets and see how they work. In fact, let's do that. We're on the default right now. Let's check out Fuji. This is Fujifilm 160C. Now, I'll click it and notice the difference. Look, how, look at the difference already. It's pretty nice. Let's try this one. This is Fuji Chrome. Another different look. Here's another Fuji Chrome film. And let's try Kodachrome. And here's a different Kodachrome. This is Kodachrome Porta. 160 VC. But if we click the compare right here, I'm going to click and hold this. Here's the before and here's the after. But look at the result right there. That's really nice. Let's take a look at the right side of the interface. Now you can see right here, we're using Kodak Porta 160 VC. This is a drop down, so you can click right here. And there it is right there. Now if you hover over these films, you can see how they change when you hover over them. And I like that you can hover over them. Now I'm going to drag this bar up and look at all the different films we have in here. Let's go up to the top. We'll just go down through a few of these. Let's click on this first one. This is an Agfa film and I'll probably say this wrong. Agfa Preciza 100. So there it is. Now we can just hover through some of the other ones. Here's a Fuji film, Fuji Instax, Here's a Fuji Provia 400X, and these are all very popular films. Some of these films are probably no longer in existence. I'm not 100% sure on that, but some of them I'm sure aren't. Here's another one. Now look at this one. This one's called Lomo Red Scale 100, and I quite like this look. It gives me a nice broody, moody type look, but this is exciting. You can just hover down over these and see how they're going to react with your image. Now, like this one right here, I don't like it on this image. I may throw another image at it, and it may look good, so bear that in mind. Different films will look better on certain images, you know, because each one of these films have their own characteristics, the way they see color and the way they see tone. But you get the idea, right? You have all these different films that you could check out. I found one that I kind of like, and that's this one, Fuji Chrome Astia 100F. Here's the before. I'm just left-clicking on this compare button. Here's the before and here's the after. And of course, you could do a, a split screen here and just slide this across. There's the before and here's the after. But I really like that. I think that looks really nice. I'm going to go back to the single view. Let's take a look at some of the adjustments that we have here so we can understand what's going on here. And this is exciting, so stick with me. The first two are very simple. You have a brightness adjustment. You could give it more brightness. I don't think I need more brightness. You have contrast. You can give it more contrast if you want to give it more contrast, but I like it just the way it is. But now here is the exciting stuff, sensitivity. You notice we have these colors, red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and violet. Now, for this particular film... DxO came up with these settings to emulate this film. Now, you could come in here and tweak it. Like if you wanted your red slider, you could drag this slider to the right or darker, move it to the left. But I like it where it is, but you have total adjustment here. For instance, if I come to, say, like green or yellow, I can make 
This is on a minus seven. I'll make the yellows darker. You see that? So you could come in here and adjust those. I'm going to put it back to where it was at a minus seven right there. But you have total adjustment here. So all the colors. But then you have saturation of all the colors. So again, these were set up by DxO to emulate this film. But if you want your reds to be more saturated, by all means, you can move this to the right. So that's one of the things they were saying as well. You could come and make up your own imaginary film, one that you like, and then you could save that out as a preset, which is kind of nice. But I like to use it to emulate the films of the old era of film photography. So I don't mess around with these adjustments too much, but I do sometimes give them a slight tweak. And next I'm going to look at tone. Now remember, we're emulating a film, this Fujichrome film. Right now you're looking at the RGB tone curve that the DxO engineers have come up for this particular Fujichrome Ostia 100 film. Now we can also look at the color channel curves for red, green, and blue. Let's see if they did anything under red. So I'm going to click on red. No, red has just a linear line, green, nothing there, and blue, nothing there. But let's go to a different film. For instance, I know on this film right here, the Lomo red scale, look at the tone curve for blue. Very intricate tone curve. Let's look at green. They've affected green as well. And let's look at red. Now, all these films will not have the color channels changed, but some of them will. If they need it, they'll have it. If they don't, they won't. So let's take a look. We're on red right now. So let's hover down through some of these other films. Like see some of these nothing. Like on that one, 160S, Fuji 160S, you see the tone curve change as well as 400H. So different tone curves are changing for different ones, but it won't change for all of them. But again, I just want you to see that they do alter these tone curves according to what the film needs. I'm still on Lomo Red Scale 100. Let's look at the RGB tone curve. This is an important slider right here. You see this opacity slider? This is only for the tone curve. So you may say, I like this effect, but it's a little too strong. So you could take the opacity of the tone curve and just pull it back a little bit. In other words, you may want some of that effect in there, but not all of it. And here's something really nice. We have a luminance channel just dealing with luminance. So if you click on that, it's just a linear curve. But what you could do with this is adjust luminance values. In other words, I could do something, for instance, like put a little S curve in here to add a little more contrast. So raise up the highlights a little bit and pull down on the shadow tones and add a little extra contrast in there. So that's a nice feature, having that luminance channel. And to get rid of points, just double click them and they go away. So you have that luminance channel as well, which is really handy. And then under tone curve, we have grain. Now, again, every one of these films has their own grain added for that particular film. The first slider is grain per pixel. So this particular film has 409 grains per pixel and then grain hardness. You can make the grain look harder by dragging this to the right or softer to the left. You can increase grain by taking the top grain per pixel slider, dragging it to the left. You'll increase the grain, drag it the whole way to the right, and you'll remove the grain. But again, these are the grain adjustments for this particular film, but you can change them. You may like the way a film looks, but you may say, I hate the grain. Not a problem. Just drag this grain slider. Just drag the grain per pixel slider the whole way to the right, and your grain is gone. So for those of you who hate grain, Nick has you covered. I went ahead and zoomed in three to one so you could really see the grain. Hopefully you can see it there. Now you'll watch, if I move this grain slider to the left, you'll see the grain is getting bigger. Can you see that? And then with the hardness slider, if I drag the adjustment to the right, you can see the grain gets really hard and coarse. If I drag it to the left, it becomes softer and softer and softer. So depending on what look you want, you can get it here. But no matter how hard or soft your grain is, if you don't want any grain, just take the grain per pixel slider and drag it the whole way to the right, and your grain is literally gone. I went back to the original film that I like, Fujichrome Astia 100F. And also, the last thing, we do have shadow and highlight protection if you need it. I don't need it here, but you have it if you need it. And you also have control points. 
and you also have an opacity. You could pull back the effect on the entire image if you don't want all of the full strength of that film in there. So you have that as well. But I like this up at 100%. Once you found the film you like, and this is the one I like, all you have to do is click apply, and that'll send us back into Photoshop. So now we can take a look. I started here. Very minimal adjustments on this image to start out with. And now, after Color Effects Pro and the Film Effects Modern branded filter, I now look like this. So, a nice change to this image. So, this is a good starting point, And then I would continue to edit from here. Well, there you go, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. And don't forget, the Black Friday sale is going on at the airing of this video. There's a lot of good savings there. Don't forget, you can click on my affiliate link in the description below this video. It'll take you right here, and then you could decide if you want any of this software. You can also get free trials and so on, but it's a really good savings. This is a great time of the year to buy, and if you love the Nick Collection like I do, now's a good time to pick it up. And here's some good news. If you own Nick Collection 3 or 4, you can pick this up for $39, the Nick Collection 5. Hey, if you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. Every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get a notification. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing!